looks like uh, they're playing with the dates of the diesel. Last we knew it was 21 days. Now they're saying it was 22 days today, which in turn is actually about 17, 18 days now. Where does that lead us to? Right before Thanksgiving, right? Hmm. A lot of goods and stuff is sold around Thanksgiving, right? How people gonna buy stuff for Thanksgiving? How people gonna buy goods for their house? How people gonna buy medications if the trucks ain't rolling? And they don't have a plan for the diesel. Did you hear what I said? They don't have a plan for when the diesel goes out. Believe what you want, but it's out there. Get it now. People be wanting to know how do how do people know all of this stuff is connected? How do you know it's all one big play, one big staged act? And all of these countries are involved. It get wild out here with this crazy stuff with these people. But have you ever noticed one time something hits, something hits everybody? Like this energy crisis. I want to use this energy crisis that's global. How is it that all the countries is feeling the energy crisis at the same time? They are making a crisis look like, okay, the United States reserves was so over full, right? What Biden start doing? He starts giving it away and selling it dirt cheap. So we, we don't have a surplus. You you giving our gasoline and, and, and reserve to a country we ain't even friends with, right? So we got to even it out so everybody's at a low. Everybody's evenly low. Every everything is is the great deception. These countries look like they're against Russia. Russia look like they're against them. China's with them. You causing the mass confusion against the people. See, they all have one thing in common. See, even though it may look like China and the United States and Russia and all these motherfuckers got a conflict. They have one thing in common. They all agree that their countries all have too many people in them. They all agree on the depopulation factor. Now, how is it you going to depopulate? To depopulate means people got to die. In order to depopulate, people got to die in masses. This winter... Bodies is going to freeze to death. There will be death from freezing cold like you've never seen before. Many loved ones that we have now, we will not see in February, nor will we all hear. This cold, and they're going to raise these prices of this gas to freeze the people. These people are satanic. These cabals. See, the ones that be, they, 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 they got the white cabals and the black cabals. They are destined to do two things. Reduce population and control everybody. In turn, reduce manhood into femininity. That's their two agendas. Control the people by using every control of what they eat, see, drink, hear. And then there's an attack on man being, being a real man in life. That's these cabals agenda. You understand what I'm saying? And 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 and, 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 and it's finished.
going to get worse. It's going to get worse. They talking about a thousand percent increase on some of these bills. Energy crisis. Energy people telling expect power outages for three to four days at a time. Imagine how long that is in the, if that was to happen in the middle of the winter. It already ain't finna be less than they neutralizing people. Don't you see they getting ready to drop the hammer? Listen to me. They telling you it's less than 25 days of gas left. So there, there means there won't be even be gas to move. The people won't be able to move. You are neutralized in your homes because there will be no gas stations, no gas at the gas stations to use. They will neutralize you, freeze you, and then come and get you. Don't y'all see this coming? They finna create it where you cannot move. Ain't gonna be no gas. Y'all y'all think the, the little bit of gas in it that we got that's high? Y'all better go stock up on as much gas as you could think of. Water and gas and food is the next commodities. These people is finna try to control all of that stuff. They finna neutralize people in the middle of the winter. They finna raise your prices of your gas or so your heating bill gonna be so high. You gonna have to eat two noodles and spread that between five siblings just to stay warm. It's coming, y'all. All right, I wanna start off by saying, Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai. Call out Yahawu by Shimei Arashai. Call out Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that tell me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists. By Hashem in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahushai, which means He's the deliverer, He's the Savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your Father. By Hashem in the name of the Rokak Wadash, which means the Holy Spirit, that's able to give us the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. If you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahab Hashem Yahashai, you could be one elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off falling after false gods and false idols. Not following the laws and commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were sent into captivity. But through Yahavashai Hamashiach being that perfect sacrifice in the flesh to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, he's been given all power to be able to sit on the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father, to be able to ransom his elect, his remnant, in blood, to be able to open the seals of this book and give the understanding to the elect, okay, before the said destruction is about to happen in Babylon the Great and other parts of the world. Babylon the Great... And the scriptures is America, okay? Babylon means confusion and America means bitter. And this place is the cash cow of these elites, which is the wicked that it speaks about in the scriptures, which is known as Esau Edom, okay? Esau means wasted away is, and they are the biblical Edomites that it speaks about in the scriptures. The Idumians, when you go into the word, uh, the Greek word um, of Edom, which is Idumia, it goes into um, red, which goes back to the curse of, their, of Cain, which Esau is reincarnated in Cain, which is the wicked, okay, which he would be cursed with what leprosy to be translucent to have his pigment showing through. And this would be the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Warburgs, the Schiffs, as you see today, which biblically they're known as the Edomites. And they are waging war on the world as far as putting a siege on the world, destroying the food supplies, destroying the gas, uh, destroying the diesel, destroying the oil. Okay, uh, cutting off all the supplies and all the people inside, they have to bow down. They want them to bow down to this uh, this B system that they're pushing forth, which is going to be a one world government, a one world military, a one world religion that's controlled by these elites. Okay, and that one world religion is going to be that device that they want to implement under your skin, that M to the BZ, that C to the hip, that they want to be able to put under your forehead or under your hand, under your skin. So they can be able to track your every movement and be able to control you, uh, your buying and selling through a central banking digital currency. And again, that will be ran by uh, blockchain, which is going to be a centralized government, which is these elites, these stakeholders that have stakes in what depopulating the earth. So just like the, the guys were saying, um, 
they're trying to depopulate the earth. There's 8.8 .8 billion people in the world and they want to uh, bring it down to 500 million. And how they do that is by bringing forth their pestilence, bringing forth their uh, their wars and their wars and these different types of proxy wars. And they're able to uh, create a tyranny on the people by implementing these man-on-man, uh, -man, woman on woman transformers, these uh, false philosophies, Roman Catholicism, Christianity, and they're able to control the masses of people with their enchantments. They're, they're telling lies to your vision with their television that they control through what the media, which media goes back to media, which goes back to witchcraft and sorcery, which, as it says in the scriptures, they would have the fatness of the earth, which would be the resources to be able to fund all these different uh, programs to be able to hide, um, you know, to hide thy hidden ones, which are you Hebrew Israelites, okay? And to be able to control it, again, with that great sword. And with that great sword comes many different teeth. I spoke about some of them, you know, the media, um, you know, of course, the hammer of the earth, you know, putting guns in the neighborhoods, putting guns, it's like you're putting drugs in the community. And now they're what weaponizing the food. Now, the food has always been weaponized. They've always had genetically modified organisms in them. But now they're telling you that you have to eat bugs and they're giving you uh, no ultimatum because they're destroying all the um, they're paying the farmers to be able to um, not farm. And also they're creating these droughts and creating these um these floods also to be able the droughts are all about destroying the um, destroying the water. So these animals like these cows and things like that, they're not going to be able to grass. What's uh, farm farm animals. So you're not going to be able to go to the grocery store by them um, destroying the diesel gas. Um, there, these trucks don't go into these certain, don't go into any of the stores. You won't be able to have medication. You won't be able to, okay, which creates all sorts of uh, disease and pestilences, okay. Order out of chaos, order out of chaos in the Latin, and also the Hegelian dialect that these devils uh, push forth. The Hegelian dialect is pressure from below, pressure from above, and they know that there's going to be utter chaos. But again, they want to depopulate the earth. And on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shemar Shai is given the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of this book to be able to open the seals to make it plain upon tables to give the understanding before the said destruction happens, to be able to warn our people so they can be able to repent and come back to the Lord before um, Yahweh Shemar Shai uh, sends forth his judgment because he's known by his judgment. Okay? And that's the time that we're in. Uh, with them, um, you know, saying there's only like 25 days of uh, diesel left, which goes into the semi trucks, which goes into how you actually get your supplies to the store. And that's going to be around about November 15th, you know, the middle of November, which is ultimately in the beginning, which is the beginning of winter, basically, or, you know, a little bit into the winter when it starts to get really cold, especially on the Midwest and, and on the East Coast. OK, and that's going to create where people are not going to be able to um, have uh, heating um they're not going to be able to have the heat, which is going to create where people are going to freeze, as the guy said. And um, and people are going to go down to Egyptian for help because they're going to have heating centers that are set up. Also, they gave a warning that there's going to be an EMP. And with the EMP, which is an electromagnetic uh, um, pulse uh, hit far as on the grid. OK, so when that hits on the grid, you're not able to have, um, you know, all electricity goes out. So say your food if you do have food in your fridge, that food will basically rot, you know, pretty much within a week. OK, unless you have perishables and things like that. And they know that because, again, most people, when they shop, they'll shop one or one or, uh, you know, one to three days. They don't shop for, uh, you know, for a month or two months usually. Right. And so they know that's going to happen. And then plus going into the winter. So how about Shemar Shai is using these elites which is the rod, the modern day Assyrian, which is which is uh, Esau, Edom, the white man, to create these um, create these uh, perplexities on the people. Okay, so that's what this lesson is going to be centered around. So Lord will be edifying. So this is Jeremiah twenty eight and eight. The prophet said, "I've been before thee, before thee old, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and evil and of pestilence." Okay, the prophets have been given the mysteries of these scriptures, the understanding to be able to. Uh, say before what's about to happen but what happens is our people let's get this first chronicles 36 
they misuse the prophets. They don't believe that these wars are happening, but now you're seeing them as far as uh, kingdom and kingdom, right? Second Chronicles, Sakya. Now you're seeing these things happen, and they're seeing that when they go to Walmart or they go to these different grocery stores that there's no food, okay? And they're starting to have less and less supplies because also Walmart, where a lot of people shop at, they're not ordering food anymore, right? So with them not ordering food any, or certain not they're ordering certain things, but they're not ordering a lot of the products that people were ordering before. A lot of these supplies are being cut down ultimately so they can be able to depopulate the earth. Second Chronicles 36 going into the famine. Second Chronicles 36 and 15. It says, In Yahweh by Shem Yahashai, thy power, thy father is sent to him by the messengers, rising betimes, and that word betimes is, is early. So the Lord has came early before the said destruction happens to be able to give his people warning and sending because he had compassion on his people in a dwelling place. So the messengers are also known as the prophets. Okay, you have the and also known as what the angels. So you have the messengers and celestial bodies. Okay, that's right. That are in the spirit world. And you also have the messengers that that are the prophets that are in celestial bodies that are giving back the messages to Yahweh Shemashai to be able to know the said time um, and what time that we're in before Yahweh Shai comes back. Right. And we're in those times. Second Chronicles 36 and 16. But they mocked the messengers of Yahweh and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of Yahweh arose against his people till there was no remedy. Okay, so there's not going to be any healing agent to those that don't hearken to the truth. That's why it speaks about in Sirach 5 and 7, make no tearing to the Lord. Okay, and also what kiss thy royal son, or unless he catch you in your activities, catch you what you're actually doing, besides what coming back to the Lord and repenting and going into what they misused the prophets, because even People of Israel, they know they know the time that they're in, but they're not giving people the proper report, okay? Because, again, the prophets are warning you about the famine, the pestilence, and the evils that are about to happen. The same thing that the disciples inquired to Yahweh which shall be the end times. And Yahweh said this. This is Luke 21. I'll just start from 9. Luke 21 and 9. But when shall you hear wars and commotions? Be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Okay, so the end is what not immediate, right? So you're seeing those wars and rumors of wars. You have the class wars, the civil wars. You have, um, you know, the low level Edomites that, that are forming militias to be able to come, ag come against the government. Okay, you have this, uh, you know, white lives matter, black lives matter BS which is ultimately going to stir up the people that are, are in gross darkness, which is going to create um, all sorts of um, basically enchantments, but there is no enchantment on Jake, right? Luke 21 and 10, and the end, and when it says um, the, the end won't follow immediately because the end is not uh, immediate because you have they have to implement that karagma, that, that graven image in your forehead or in your hand that's physical, that M to the BZ, that, that small debit card that they want under your skin. OK, they have to implement that first because that's going to be the um, Revelation 3 and 10, the hour and temptation where our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to be able to intervene for his elect. That's six trouble. OK, that's a major prophecy. Right. Luke 21 and 10. And then said unto him, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. So that's what we're seeing right now. You have uh, America beefing with Russia, uh, China beefing with America. You have Iran beefing with Israel, you know, Taiwan with, with China. All these different nations are beefing against each other. They're also assembling the bricks versus the, the whore, which is Babylon the Great, that rides upon what the beast system, which is NATO, to can, started off with 10, and now it's about, what, 28 different nations that are consulting together to bring in this new world order, okay? And they're, they're beefing against each other, and that goes into what, Mark 3 and 25, where it speaks about um, if Satan get advantage, if Satan rise up against each other, how can they both stand? Roughly paraphrasing, okay? And they're being consumed by this word, by this by this truth that's going out because they know that they have but a short time. And they want to be able to implement their new world order, their Novus Order Sequorium. And one of those new world everyone karagmed up, okay? Everyone with that graven image because they want everlasting slaves. They don't want people... Uh, telling their business. They don't want people like the prophets exposing who they are, making them bear through the scriptures because they know that there's power in these scriptures and power in this word. That's why they tried to ban 
um, the Bible, um, you know, in the past in the Grecian Empire, um, which is these are nothing but the um, the Grecians all over again, the Idumeans, okay, the Edomites, the biblical Edomites. They go by different nationalities because they're what a vagabond fugitive, which vagabond means running to and fro. Their judgment, a fugitive means um, going back to the killing. Is about going back all the way to Abba Bivens, okay, when he came on the scene in 1970. And now you see what the head apostles at Great Millstone and the men on down that are following the land wherever that he goes. And they've been speaking about the famine. They've been speaking about these FEMA camps. They've been speaking, or we've been speaking about um, these Caraguas, okay? These far as what they're, they're trying, how they're going to be able to implement them. And how they're going to be able to implement them is by destroying these certain resources because Babylon the Great has been living in a wanton spirit. Okay, as far as they have everything, they're in a metropolitan spirit, which metropolitan means goes goes into the word uh, feminine. Okay, they don't have to go out and hunt their food; they just go to these grocery stores, and that's going to. Let's get this. It says the Lord Yahweh Shemashai of heavens of armies will take away from Jerusalem and Judah everything they depend on, every bit of bread and every drop of water. So again, that's going into the um, the food stamps, that's going into the section eight, that's going into the HUD, and you're seeing that in different parts of the world where they're cutting off those certain resources. Okay, which is going into the what the food and the water, and once the whole economy breaks, which we're in a recession right now, once the whole economy breaks and and the the money supply is not there. That um, that staff, okay. Once that's not there to be able to lean on, then other chaos is going to break out, and they know that, and they're all doing this what through their gradualism, as far as cutting off certain supplies, bringing in certain draconian measures, and all these things are going to lead to what um, the destruction of Babylon and other parts of the world. You're already seeing around the world that the uproars of the people, the sedition among the people. And once this breaks right here, let me read this in the King James Version. For behold, Yahweh Shemashai of hosts, that word host goes in the armies, do take away from Jerusalem and from Judah. So again, the northern and southern tribes, right? The stay and the staff, the whole, the stay of the bread and the whole stay of the water. Okay, going into your money, going into your food, going into your shelter. And once that stops, which, which is going into these trucks, because again, it, how are you going to have shelter in the winter but with no heat, how you going? You're not going to have food because these grocery stores are not going to have the food because again the diesel is not able to run. And one other thing that I remember, I was doing a lesson about a couple months ago, where they um the di they were having diesel shortage too, but also they had an oil sort shortage. Okay, as far as on the oil that um that goes into these certain trucks because there's a certain type of oil that you have to have, and they said that in a year. Basically, that would be gone, right? Or, or I think it was it was either six months to a year. But the thing is, is that now they're cutting off the oil because they can be able to make that oil. It's not even a problem. But what are they doing? They're they're making sure that these trucks don't have any supplies on them, no medication, no hygiene, uh, no food, because they want people to kill each other. They ha want to uh, to what depopulate the earth. This is the man of sin. This is the son of perdition. Okay, and these are the times we're in. And it's important to what repent and seek Yahabashim Rashai while he may be found. Because all these things are the signs of the end times. This is Jehovah Rashai speaking in red letter, telling the disciples this would be the end times, or these this would be the things that would be happening in the end times. And we're seeing them. It says, Luke 21 and 11, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. So again, earthquakes all over the world. Okay. Also, you just had you had an earthquake over here in San Jose, okay, a 5.1. Uh, far as over here in California, I'm in Southern California and San Jose is, is, you know, a little bit further up. But the thing is, is that these earthquakes are getting closer and closer to uh, Babylon the Great. You see them all around the world and famine. So we're seeing the famine. They destroyed over 200 uh, food operational centers. 
Uh, BG is buying up the farmland. They're paying the farmers not to farm, not to farm. Okay, and that's going to create a famine. And again, there's going to be these mass floods to these stores. And there's going to be nothing in there. Just like you saw a preview of that when um, the pandemic happened, you saw a lot of people, there was food shortages. They were saying you only could buy one piece of bread and one piece of toilet paper, all these certain things. And people started to bug out. Okay. And that was Esau Edom doing a, what, a diligent search. Luke 21 and 11 in the middle. And the famines and pestilence. So we saw the pestilence as far as um, the beetle juice that happened a couple of years ago. And now the people that went down to Egyptian and got those uh, uh, beetle juices, got those got those jump shots, got those hot sauces, those hot packs, okay, are now doing the Justin Bieber and doing the Harlem Shake. And those people are now patenting by that um, by those companies that they got. So now you are what you are part of those companies. Now your ownership of those companies and all. And what they're going to do is they have 5G and 6G technology where they can be able to turn you up. Okay. Be able to turn you up far as um, on these different cities because they want to be able to exterminate these cities and what be able to rebuild. Right. Because, again, what is it? The Great Reset, which ultimately the Great Reset is nothing on a cold word for um, their new world order. Okay, their Novus Ordo Sequorum, the El Plumios Unum, which is, means one of many. And also when they say depop, when they say climate change, climate change means depopulation. They want to depopulate the earth. Okay, they use these words that seem like they're deep and they're, they're trying to help. But 21 and 11 and, and at the bottom and fearful sights and great signs and there shall be it from heaven. Okay, so again, you have the planets orbiting. As um, far as in the sky, as uh, far as they're aligning together, you have uh, these blood moons. You're having what the, the first of all the chariots in the sky. The world only calls UFOs. You have the chariots in the sky that are that are visiting the brothers, visiting the Akim all around, right? Um, and that and going in these um, these certain navy bases and basically stunting on, stunting on Esau Edom, showing that showing that um, they have no uh, gravitational power. They they can be able to go up, go down, go underwater. Uh, they can be able to cloak, okay? Showing you that Esau Edom doesn't have a shot. But again, Yahabba Shaman Shai is putting that, um, putting that spirit on them to keep to keep pushing, to ultimately to fulfill prophecy, okay? You're seeing what the red skies, right? And, all, and then plus you're seeing the barium aluminum in the air that they keep putting in the air and keep spraying, okay? And all that starts to link into those that took that, um, that beetle juice Right. And they start to what get activated. Right. And we're seeing plus we're seeing also a lot of judgments. People are killing their whole families, hacking people's heads off all these different signs. OK, let me read this in the NLT. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues in many lands. And are we seeing that? OK, we're seeing that all around the world. You have the people in Poland, uh, the people over there in um, what is it? The Dutch, uh, Haiti, Puerto Rico. OK. You're, you're seeing them that they're they're protesting over there. Puerto Rico got hit with a hurricane. Okay, they don't have no they don't have no lights. Okay, and they still haven't really reported on it. And Pedro Joe sent down FEMA, which we know FEMA is nothing but basically these um, agencies that are set up um, to gather up the people and bring them to these internment camps. And we know our people are down there, right? Ephraim, uh, the so-called Puerto Ricans, right? And then what you have the Haitians. Down there, they, they got hit. They knocked off the uh, Esau knocked off the president because he didn't want to bow down to the Beetlejuice, right? So now they're being ran. Um, uh, they're being ran by by a certain I forgot his leader. He has a he has a funny ass name, but anyway, he's down there, and they're basically cutting off certain supplies, and basically what that's going to create where where um, you know Babylon the Great they're going to send their militias to that place and start knocking people off or hit it with the earthquake. Or hit it with the, um, you know, a hurricane, okay? Because again, they have these powers. They have the heart machine, right? Where they can be able to create certain weathers uh, in these certain places to what depopulate the earth. They also have um, where they can be able to microwave people, okay? And this is the man of sin that 
is is waging war on the people, creating this famine, creating this uh, diesel shortage, right? And there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven, okay? And the miraculous signs from heaven are ultimately those chariots, okay? That are ultimately, Lord willing, we're of that number, they're going to beam us up. Luke 21 and let's skip down, I'm going to skip down to 21. Uh, 25, slack you. Luke 21 and 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. So that was the same thing that's reiterated, uh, you know, in the chapter above that I just read, right? Um, and the moon and the stars and upon earth distress. So again, you're seeing the uproars of the people. You're seeing uh, the perplexity. You're seeing um, the people that are upset with these different governments, right? Of nations with perplexity, the sea, seas of the waves roaring. Okay, yeah, the strange tides you had over there in Florida where basically the water went all the way back and basically where and when it does that, when it goes all the way back from from where it was as far as up by the sand, it, that's going to create a huge tsunami that's going to come back. Okay, and we're seeing all those at an epic level and it's not just one place. This is all around the world in an oinkumented sense. This is Luke 21 and 25 and this is the word perplexity. And this is the time that we're headed into when the, when those diesel trucks are actually out and there's no more of them. Strong G640. Slacky, then let's go to the second one. So this is the Greek 639, Aparo. Strong G639, Apareo. 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 Okay, Apareo. That's in the Greek 639. To be without resources, okay? No food, no water. No, you saw that they were destroying the, the baby formula, okay? So be without resources, to be without what? Heat, to be without lights, okay? To be in straits, yeah, position of difficulty. To left wanting, to be embarrassed, to be in doubt. You're going to be embarrassed because you didn't hearken to this word, okay? You misused the prophets, and you're going to be looking for the prophets. But again, Yahabba Shemashah is going to have us in a safe place. Lord willing, I'm of that number. To be in doubt, yeah, you're going to be in doubt, looking around, and what cannibalism is going to increase, Okay, people are going to start eating each other because, again, and also what there's going to be a hyperinflation. OK, going into a, um, Lord willing, I go into that Revelation six. OK, where a can of basically a can of corn will be a day's wage. Right. Not to know which way to turn. Yeah, you're not going to know which way to turn. OK, because, again, all these stores are going to be closed and people are going to be out there ravaging people. They're going to be out there stealing their goods, spoiling their goods. OK, because, again. Uh, there's a saying in the world, you know, three days you will riot for food, one week you will steal for food, and two weeks you will kill for food, okay? And that's at the uh, the point that we're in, to be at loss with oneself, to be in doubt, not to know how to decide what to do or to be perplexed, okay? So you're going to be perplexed if you don't have this word. There's going to be no food, no water. All these things are going to be cut off. And right now, Yahabah Shemar Shai is giving the warning to our people, but they don't want to hear. They don't want to, what, come to the battle? This is uh, Ezekiel 14 and... Yep. Ezekiel 14 and 13. Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, I will stretch out my hand upon it. I will break the staff of bread thereof. I will send a famine upon it, and I will cut off man and beast from it. So that's what the point we're at, where the Lord's going to what cut off the food supply, uh, cut off the nourishments, cut off what the mercy spirit. Okay. This is the one I wanted, though. But that was a good one, too. Uh, 14. Ezekiel 7 and 14. It says, they have blown the trumpet. Okay, who is they? Those are the prophets that will have the secrets, that have the understanding. Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and Yahweh had not done it? Surely the Lord Yahweh Shema Shai would do nothing, but he revealed his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So he revealed the understanding to his servants, the prophets, to be able to go on the highways and the byways and to be able to um, and put out these epistles to be able to give our people warning. You can't say you didn't hear this word, okay? 
Deuteronomy 29 and 29, the secret things belong unto Yahweh thy power, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to the children forever that we may do the words of the law. So some of the secrets are what? There's going to be a famine, a great famine. Okay. The, uh, another secret is who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. Okay. Um, who Esau Edom is, which is the so-called white men of today. And that, that's true power when you know who your enemy is. And also when you know why you're oppressed. And also when you know who your true power is. Okay. Going into what those prophets that got the understanding and those that what have been have been gifted with it. Isaiah 42 and 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass. Okay. So again, it says, and the new things do I declare. So the things that came to pass were all the prophecies that the prophets, the prophets have prophesied before. Okay. Going back to Jeremiah 28 and 8. The new things are what? The World War III, um, Esau, Edom being put in punishment, that great. Uh, a famine also with the, them implementing the kragma them coming in like a flood these are the new things also with the salvation the strange salvation which is yahweh beaming up his elect okay those laser beams coming down and destroying this place okay like the, the the time of trouble before they spring forth i tell you of them so the lord has told us told us about what these these famines that were about to happen as we're reading right here and he's calling us to battle um but again this is what happens with two-thirds it says Ezekiel 7 and 14, it says they have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none go into the battle for my wrath is upon the multitude thereof. The sword is without the pestilence and the famine within he that is in the field shall die with the sword. And he is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour it. Okay. So again, this is going into, doesn't matter where you're at. Okay. If you don't have this hedge of protection, you're going to get it. Okay. Because again, when Yahab Shai sets that arrow on you or sets that, that, uh, you know, that mark on you. You're going to get hit. Okay. That's why we're praying that um, we're able to what hold on to this crown. And another thing that the guy was speaking about, he would, this happened before. This is Leviticus 26 and 26. It says, and when he had broken the staff of bread, it said, let me read this in the NLT. Because it says, um, now this was uh, written in the time of, um, the time of Moses. Okay. And. And basically there was a famine, right? Which was written for our fourth time, was written for our learning. So this applies to this time too. Leviticus 26 and 26, I will destroy your food supply so that 10 women will need only one even to make bread for their families. They will ration your food by weight. And though you have food to eat, you will not be satisfied. Okay. So again, 10, um, what does it say? It says 10 women will have what? One piece of bread. Okay. And you, and you have to what? Ration the food out. Going into what hyperinflation, going into, um, you know, with them not having the diesel trucks, only have what a lack of bread, right? Let's get another scripture, or another account, actually. Actually, let me go up to here, Revelation six and four, because this is what this devil is doing. He's taking peace from the earth because he's taking away uh, the luxuries or the resources um, that we had. Let me uh, let's see. Let's start here. This is twenty eight. 28 and 52 it says and he had and he shall and this is this happened in the time of um when the temple was being sacked but again this is uh also to this time right now it's the same thing happening again Deuteronomy 28 and 52 and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high fence walls come down wherein thou trusted throughout all the land and he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all the land which Yahweh thy power had given thee okay it says and thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body in the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters, which Yahweh thy power had given thee, and the siege and the straightness wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. So that siege goes into a military tactic where they cut off the certain food supplies and the people inside have to bow down to whatever the oppressor is speaking about. Okay? But there is what? There's 7,000 men, Romans 11 and 4, that won't bow down to the image of Baal, that are not going to bow down to this devil. OK, they're not going to give in, even though um, it's going to be what uh, um, through much tribulation we shall enter into the kingdom. OK, it's not going to be an easy thing. That's why we have to what go down that straight path real quick. This is uh, first Kings 19 and 18. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all these knees which have not bowed to Baal and every mouth which had not kissed him. So a kiss goes into a sign of respect. We're not we're not bowing down to Esau and kissing his ass. Okay, we're going to trust in the Lord. And the Lord said that we would, what, be able to eat. 
Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore thus said, Yahweh Shemir Hashai, Behold, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. So you're going to be ashamed when you didn't come back to the Lord. Okay? In that time, because you're not going to have no food, no water, no drink. You're not going to be able to have an OnlyFans. You're not going to be able to uh, trust in your job. This is Psalms 37 and 19. Yep, it says Psalms 37 and 19. It says, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of the famine, they shall they shall be satisfied. So that's going into the elect. The elect is going to be satisfied in that time. I think it's another one in here. This is Job 5 and 18. Yep, Job 5 and 20. In a famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Okay, so the Lord is going to redeem us from what the power of the sword because not only are they cutting off the what the food supply and creating what that great siege and how people are going to be engaged in cannibalism. Uh, Esau Edom is also going to be uh, putting in his super soldiers, his sleeper cells, his martial law to come across and, and sweep these different places. Because like the guy said, he said, even when the people are frozen, they're going to go straight to the houses and get the people. Because what do they do? They use our organs. They use our, our body parts. They use our melatonin um, so they can be able to... Um, Again, live longer because we are what the, the true, we are gods, okay? We, we are princes of the power from Yahabah Shemar Hashai, okay? And we're not like these other heathen nations. These other heathen nations are nothing but a bucket of spittle. That's why they use um, everything that we have. They use our blood. We have old positive blood, which goes into, it can be able to use for different, uh, uh, um, you know, blood transfusions. Okay, again, going into melatonin, our skin type, our, our, our um, again, the melatonin. Um, can be able to help. That's that's more than gold on the market. Um, you also have um, the organs. Our organs last longer, okay, and are stronger, right? And this goes into this devil, right? That what he's what he's doing. He's taking peace from the earth. Revelation six and four. And there went out another horse that was red, and that re that horse symbolizes power, and the red symbolizes uh, Esau Edom. Okay, when you go into the word Edom, it goes into the Greek word Idumia. Which goes into red, going back to Genesis 25 um, and 30, where it speaks about Esau, Edom came out red all over. Okay, and his name is inter Esau is interchangeable with uh, Edom, Genesis 36 and 36. Going back to the curse uh, of Cain, which Esau is reincarnated of Cain, he's, he's the wicked, right? They are both the, they are just a reincarnation of him, right? Let me get a scripture. This is 1 John 3. And 18. Let's see. Actually, 1 John 3 and 12, I think it is. Yep. First, yeah, 1 John 3 and 12. Not as Cain, who was the wicked one and slew his brother, and where, wherewith slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. And this is the same story that's reiterated in Genesis 27. Okay. That he would seek to what slay, slay his brother. And I'll just get straight to the point. Genesis 27 and 40. It says an Esau, which is, again, which is Cain, reincarnated, right? Which is the white man of today. And Esau hated Jacob because of his blessing. And this is what it's all about. That our forefather Jacob supplanted uh, Esau Edom. Far as in the blessing of immortality and salvation. Cain was blessed with, as you read uh, a little bit earlier, the fatness of the earth, Right? And that great sword that he had to live by, okay? And the kingdom of uh, Yashala, they're blessed with immortality and salvation. And Esau is only uh, only up for a little bit of a season, right? It says, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, so he said in his lahab, his mind, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. That's what this is all about. Good versus evil. Jacob is the righteous which would be the protagonist, and Esau is the antagonist, which would be the villain, okay? And they're all obedient by bringing in the kingdom of Yasha Allah to what Yaharashai, king of king, lord of hosts, okay? And the elect is going to be joint heirs. So that's why he seeks to what? Cut off the food supply and cut off all these things. Because again, going back to who he is, he is the wicked, as I read in King, right? Or Asaki, as I read in 1 John 3 and 12. Going back to who this is right here. Revelation 6 and 4, and there went out another horse. The horse symbolizes power. The red symbolizes uh, Esau Edom, the white man of today. 
and power was given unto him that sat therein to take peace from the earth. So again, going back to Genesis 27 and 39, the fatness of the earth goes into the resources, the fertile land, uh, the money to be able to uh, push out these certain um, doctrines or like your false doctrines, but put out these, you know, uh, um, these different testings on our people. OK, sat therein to take peace from the earth. And that's what they're doing by what? Destroying the, the diesel gas. OK, uh, and they should kill one another. Yeah, they're, they're fighting up. They're all constantly always fighting up against each other. Because, again, the head tribe of Amalek is not letting these low-level Edomites into the gate because they see them as the same people. Um, they see them as the same as, uh, as, as so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans. Okay? Again, going into, they shall fight again. They shall, they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. That great sword goes back to what I just read, Genesis 27 and 40. He was given that great sword, and that's how he has to live. Okay? And that great sword has many different teeth. One of them is cutting off certain supplies, weaponizing the food. Okay, five. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. That black horse is going to be the, the symbolic of the judgment of the people. Okay, judging either righteousness or judging wickedness. Okay, and also what the, the, the oppression that's been on our people, right, with that black horse. Six and heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and their measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and thy wine. OK, so again, that measure of wheat for a penny goes into denarius, which goes into 10, which goes into basically say if you make one hundred and fifty dollars a day. OK, um, you would basically spend about one hundred and twenty dollars on on uh, certain food supplies for that day. Say a can of corn would be one hundred and twenty dollars going into hyperinflation. OK, and when it goes into oil and wine at the end, that's speaking about this truth, holding on to this truth um, and not forsaking the Lord, not cussing out the Lord because you're catching hell. OK, but trusting, trusting that Yahweh Shai is going to be able to help you, um, is going to be able to save you in Jacob's trouble and also the hour of temptation. OK. Skipping down Revelation um, six and eight and look, behold, a pale horse, that pale horse is Esau Edom. OK, and his name sat on him was death. And that's what Esau Edom was bringing for death because he is that rod. He's that hammer uh, on our people that won't hearken. Right. That won't hearken to this word. So the Lord, Yahweh is going to use him to destroy a lot of our people and in hell. So hell is a condition played out on earth when you don't have food, you don't have water, you have pestilence all around. People are running, running back and forth, you know, uh, uh, killing people, slaughtering people. OK, that is hell. Follow with him and power was over the in the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and death and with the beasts of the earth. So again, also a lot of these animals are going to be a leash. There's going to be new created beasts too. Okay. And this is going to be what these uh, spirits created for vengeance. And this was a, a couple of quotes. This is one of their um, puppets that they use, right? It says, depopulate, this is Henry Kissinger, depopulation shall be the highest priority of foreign policy towards the third world, okay? So why would they want to depopulate? So they don't have to feed anybody, okay? And the ones that are alive, they're going to be able to control them. That's why they want that device inside of them, right? This is another one that he said, right? It says the New World Order, and this is um, Henry Kissinger, uh, Karl Schwab, you know, the leader of the of the Great Reset, which has been around for a long time. This is his um, apprentice. Uh, Karl Schwab is his apprentice, just like Yuval Noah Herrera is the apprentice of Karl Schwab. This is his apprentice. This guy's been going around for years and years. He even sold out his own people. Okay, he sold out his own people to be a part of um, Esau Edom, as far as uh, the wicked wicked deeds right it says the new world when you go into it, i did a lesson about it right when going into um his history right and he has a history of going to these different third world countries and basically um uh creating division you know buying out you know giving them a bunch of money through usury that they can never pay back and when they can't pay it back they come in with these economic hitmen and either make a plan to have a cult of personality stand up or they just destroy everybody and put up put up um, a fake president, and then they start bringing in these different corporations, you know, like these these candy corporations and these soda corporations, 
and they're able to make money off the blood, sweat, and tears. That's why these um, these other nations, uh, the weak are saying they're strong because they've been devoured by Esau Edom by that red horse coming through, and they're they're tired of it too. Okay, so those were just a couple uh, quotes that I picked up, and so want to go. In, this was like two two articles real quick just to show them. And there, were, there was a bunch of them far as that reached. So this was, I think this is today. Oh, no, this was yesterday. It says the threat of diesel shortage looms as reserves dwindle. Okay? Because what did Petal Joe do? He sent he uh, sent the reserves over there to Ukraine. He sold them and into Europe. Okay? Showing you that they don't care about Babylon the Great. That's that siege. It says the Biden administration says it is keeping a close watch on diesel inventors and working to boost supplies following news that reserves have been depleted and could run out in less than a month, if not replenished, sparking fears of shortages and rising prices. Okay. Meanwhile, they're sending billions of dollars over to Ukraine. Okay. So this is the type of people that you're speaking with, the double tongue people, right? The Energy Information Administration reported this week that is that is as of Slakia, October 14th, the U.S. had only 25 days of reserve diesel supply, low not seen since 2008. National Economic Council Director Brian Deese acknowledged to Bloomberg that the level is unacceptable low and all options are the table to address situations. So they can easily just dig in. the. They have they have oil resources, but what are they doing? They're creating that uh, fear mongering. So I just want to get a little bit of this because basically those guys had said pretty much the, the basics of it. And this is on Fox News showing you. And the Fox is usually what uh, is ran by these elites. OK. And even them, even they are what saying the truth far as them cutting off the food supply. They're letting you know. And which is the same thing the prophets have been speaking about. And also, yeah, over there in Saudi Arabia, with them gearing up to uh, be with Russia, to be part of the BRICS nations, that's going to create also. Uh, that long time tie with uh, Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed, which means that these gas prices are going to grow up to go up to about twelve dollars a gallon, which and, and also the guy said it. Um, that's why I let the whole video play through um, that you're not going to be able to go anywhere. And that's what they want. They want you to be in the metaverse, which is going when you go into the word uh, metaverse or when you go into the word forehead on Revelation 13 and 16, it goes into word metaphon. Which is ultimately where they want to put that device, so they can be able to control your every movement. You won't be able to move uh, where you, the way that you want to. Okay, one million barrels of home heating oil, and House Democrats from New England are asking President Biden to release some of those reserves to help reduce some heating prices. Yeah, you can't release things that you don't have. They sold them away. Okay, they did that a couple of months ago. I did a lesson about that too. That he was selling away uh, resources. Going into the perplexity. Okay, this was another one that was on Fox. This is on uh, Realtors. This is, uh, so this was earlier today, about an hour ago. It says, column U.S. diesel shortage increasingly likened unto economy slows. Okay. It says, um, so this is in California. It says, well, actually, no, it says London. U.S. diesel supplies are becoming critical low without shortages and price spikes likely to occur in the next six months unless until the economy and fuel consumption slow. And it's not going to slow because what these elites did, these Rothschilds, they um, hit that pipeline, the Nord Stream 2. And then what did they do? They created their own pipeline over there in Poland, okay, which is called, um, I think it's called the Rothschild Energy, which is their program. And also um, there's their company and also Odessa. Which Odessa is another another company as far as the oil rigs that are over there, and what they have done, and Odessa is doing um, backdoor deals with um, Petal Joe and his uh, son Hunter Biden. Okay, crackhead. It says started collecting weekly and dated in 1982. All right, so we get the point. You know, I just want to bring out those two articles to show you it's not just in one place and it's in mainstream media. Okay, it's not just on TikTok, right? And this is all prophesied that would happen. This is Second Ezra. So I'm gonna start here. Second Ezra eight. Actually, let me. Um, there was another scripture. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll just start here. Second Ezra eight. I'm gonna start at the bottom. 
Second Ezra is 8 and 61. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. So the Lord is not prolonging his word anymore. And Yahabah Shemar Shai is what? Known by his judgment. Let's get that. That's the one I wanted. Twari Yahabah Shemar Shai. Psalms 9 and 16. Let me start from 8. Yep. Psalms 9 and 8. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people and uprighteousness. And Yahweh also, also will be a refuge for the oppressed or refuge in the times of trouble. Because again, this is going to be a time of trouble like never before. It says, and they... And they that know the name will put their trust in you. They that know the name. Why would it say that? They that know the name. In the land of our captivity, we will call upon the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay? And they that know the name will put their trust in thee. For that, for thou, Yahweh has not forsaken them, that they seek thee. Sing praises to Yahweh, which dwell in Zion. Declare among the peoples his doings. And that's what we're doing. We're singing this beautiful song. But the thing is, is that um, our people won't hearken to this word. Okay, they, we have piped into you and you have not danced, right? And when they see this new song, they mock and they scoff. They think it's just a fad. They think it's some Black Panther bullshit or they think it's some, um, uh, you know, just, just basically a fad, okay? But this is not a fad. This is our heritage and Yahabah Shema Shai is having us what, come back to this word, okay? This is real quick, Matthews 12 and 17 and saying, we have piped into you you have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. Okay? So when we sing in this new song on the highways and the byways, they what? Mock and they scoff. Let me get another scripture just to go on to the new song. Because the new song is going to be able to, Lord willing, if you're of the elect, to be able to save you. Any, any other song is not going to be able to save you. Okay? Going into this gospel. This is Psalms 40 and 3. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our power. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in Yahweh Basham Shai. So we're seeing the we're seeing the beginning stages of the famine. We see Esau Edom cutting up, um, you know, uh, cutting down the food supply. Okay, and we're rejoicing because it's showing you that what these prophecies are true and faithful, or, or the word is what truthful, um, truthful and faithful. Right? It says Psalms forty and four. Blessed is the man, socket faithful and true. Which faithful and true is also known as Yahweh Shai. That's uh, Psalms 15. Uh, Psalms 40 and 4. Blessed is the man that maketh Yahweh Bashim Shai his trust and respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to the lies. So we're not supposed to respect the proud because what they're they're um so-called winning in this world, because they're gonna be put down. Okay, they're, the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. This is Psalm 73 and Actually, um, I think that's, I just want to get this scripture. This is Psalms 5. I was reading this today. This is Psalms 5. And... Psalms 5 and 8. Lead me, O Yahweh, Shema Shai, in righteousness, because of my enemies. Uh, make thy way straight before my face, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth, and their inward part is a very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre, their flattery with their tongue. Destroy them, O Yahweh, thy power. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out of the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shall for joy because thou defendest them and let them also love thy name and be joyful in thee for thou O power bless Yahweh Shema Shai, the righteous with favor where thou can pass him, pass him as a shield so the Lord's going to uh, be able to um, give us that shield let me get a scripture say it better this is Psalms 18 Psalms 18 and 2, the Lord Yahweh Shemar is my rock 
and my fortress and my deliverer and my power and my strength in whom I will trust and my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon Yahweh Shemashai who is worthy to be praised shall be saved from my enemies. Okay, the sorrows of death can pass me and the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell, which is a condition played out on earth, can pass me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon Yahweh Shemashai and cried upon my power. He heard my voice out of the temple, and my cry came before him and even to his ears. Okay, so it came to his ears. He hears those that what call upon that name that are singing upon that, that, that beautiful song. Okay, that's why I brought out those scriptures, right? Psalms 9 and 12. It says, when he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembered them. He forget not the cry of the humble. So the inquisition goes into what? That great uh, uh, testifying against what Esau Edom. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 9. When he's what? Going to be able to revenge uh, those that hated him. Okay? And we're supposed to what? Wait upon the Lord and not what? Gather up arms ourselves. Right? As it speaks about, what is that? Romans uh, 12 and 19. I'll just get over here. It says, Romans 12 and 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place into wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said Yahweh Shai. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed Asakia. So let's go back to 19. Romans 12 and 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place into the wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, said Yahweh Shai. So he's going to repay our enemies. Going into right here, it says, Psalms 9 and 12. For he who avenges murder cares for the helpless. He does not ignore the cries of those who suffer. And right now we're suffering. We're under a, 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 a draconian uh, dictatorship that wants to have us dead because we're speaking the truth. Psalms 9 and 13. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou lifted up me from thy gates of thy death. So again, lifted us up from what the jaws of their teeth, okay, of what their, their, um, their man-made famine, their man-made pestilence, okay? And the Lord is what? Going to be able to lift us up and set that standard for his elect. We're praying we're of that number. Psalms 9 and 14, it says, That I may show forth all the praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in the salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that made in the net, which they had hid is their own feet taken. Okay, so they're going to be taken because they try to touch what the apple of Yahweh Shemashai's eye. Okay, Psalms 9 and 16, it says, The Lord Yahweh is known by his judgment, which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. And he's going to be snared in the, in, the, uh, in his own hands. This is another scripture. And all his new world order is going to go to naught. Psalms 21 and 11, For they intended evil against thee. They imagined mischiefs and device, which they, had, which they are not able to perform. They're not able to what succeed in what their instruments of the churl. But they're also going to get a lot of our people. Because a lot of our people are going to go down to what the Egyptian for help. This is Isaiah 32 and 7. The instruments also of the churl are evil. They devise wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. So even when the true men of the Lord are speaking right, what do they do? They slander and, and they're bringing out what the great accusation against what the um uh, the prophets, right? Accuser thy brethren. So going back to this. This is 2 Ezra 8 and 61. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. Yeah, Yahweh Shema Shai is known by his judgment. Okay, and now what he's not prolonging his word anymore. 62, it says, These things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee, and few like thee. And answered I and said, going into the elect, the chosen, right? Behold, O Yahweh Shema Shai, now hast thou showed me the multitude of wonders which thou will begin to do in the last times. But at what time thou hast not showed me? So right now, uh, Yahweh Shema Shai is showing us because what the vision is yet for appointed time at the end it shall speak as I read it with Habakkuk 2 and 3 okay and now what it's a beginning to what escalate it's beginning to be what manifest going into right here second Ezra 9 and 1 and he answered me and then said measure thy time diligently itself when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before so I read those in Luke 21 and 9 okay these are the signs of the end times <coughs> right it says, too, according to the scriptures, then thou shalt understand that it is the very same time when wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So he's visiting us, what, by those uh, so called the world ignorant calls UFOs, but those are the chariots of the Lord. They're what visiting us and, and starting with also the prophets being on the highways and the byways. 
That's how the Lord is visiting us because the prophets are the ones that have the secrets to be able to give you understanding. That's how you know um, uh, that there's still what, a time of mercy. Okay, what because the prophets are going to be on the highways and the byways until until the Lord what takes them away. And once he takes them away, that doors of repentance are going to be closed. Okay. It says 2 Ezra 9 and 3. Therefore, uh, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Aren't we seeing that? Okay. Again, uh, many different earthquakes. When you look on the earthquake app, you have the, the hurricanes, the floods, the droughts, and all these things has said to happen in the latter days, which we're seeing them increase. They're at biblical proportions. Now, these things have happened before, but this is at a biblical pr biblical proportion, Slaki. Second Ezra is 9 and 4. And then shall thou will understand that the Most High, Yahabah Shemash, I spoke of these things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Yes, yeah, so Yahabah Shemash has uh, written, the story was written from the beginning. Real quick, 46 and 10. Isaiah 46 and 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times. The ancient times is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. He has no beginning or end. The things that are yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Who is this counsel? The true men of the Lord. Okay, the prophets that are giving you what the understanding. Bringing in the judgment. This is Daniel's. Two and twenty. Daniel 2 and 20, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed is the name of Yahweh forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the season. He removeth the kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and the knowledge to them that know the understanding. He revealeth the deep secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and that light that dwell with them. Okay, and that light dwells with the servants, the prophets. Okay, that's why it speaks about 1 Peter we have a more short word of prophecy because we're seeing the things happening right now that it that speaks about in the scriptures. This is uh, 2 Peter 1 and 19. 2 Peter 1 and 19. We have also a more short word of prophecy. Okay, prophecy means what? To say before. Okay, to forecast before. Because again, the prophets, starting with the head apostle of Great Millstone, have been saying these certain things for over 20, 30 years. Okay, and now what they're coming true. Right? Same as the scriptures, right? Where whereunto you do well that you take heed as into the light that shines in the dark place. Okay, that light is the truth. This dark place is, is the valley of shadow of death. A valley that speaks about in Psalms 23 and also in uh, Job uh, 10 and 21. But the valley is speaking about um, a place that's set at a low moral standard. There's no morals. There's, you know, man on man, woman on woman, transformer. You can marry a pet you can, or you can marry a dog, a cat. Um, you can be um, everything but a true Hebrew Israelite. If you're a Hebrew Israelite, okay, and you're coming with this true doctrine, then you are despised even amongst your people, okay, showing you that this is a dark place, which dark place goes into what uh, confusion, obscurity, okay, it goes into what uh, doubt, okay, and the servants of Yahweh Shem Shai don't ha have no doubt about our Lord and his power and his true power, and, and, and this world is going to know um, Yahweh Shem Shai like we know him. Uh, Sirach 36 and 5, it says uh, 2 Peter 1 and 19 in the middle, until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts, okay? That's going into Yahweh Shai, okay? He rises, he's arising in our hearts by what put giving us this, this light and this wisdom. This, let me get a scripture just since I was speaking about this. this is Isaiah 60 and 1. Isaiah 60 and 1, rise and shine for the light has come. So the truth has come. And the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. So he's risen upon our minds and our hearts to be able to give us um, sound doctrine, to be able to stir up that pure mind. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the ghost darkness the people, but Yahweh shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Okay? And the glory is being seen upon what the men of the Lord. Okay? That are what? Uh, gathering together by this word and breaking bread with each other far as comforting one another through these scriptures. Right? So going back to, what is that, uh, Second Ezra, I actually, um, let me finish that out, 2 Peter 1 and 20, 2 Peter 1 and 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is any private interpretation, okay, and this is not of our own feelings, of our own fruition, this is straight from Yahab HaShem HaShai, he's the one that gives us the words to be able to speak, 2 Peter 1 and 21, for the prophecy came not in the old time, but the will of man. Okay, but the holy man of Yahweh spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And when that Holy Ghost actually means the Holy Spirit, 
okay, which is the real Kakladash that's able to give us the understanding again who we are, okay, that's able to, um, you know, give us the understanding, okay, through Yahweh Bashem Rashai, because there's three entities. You have the Heavenly Father Yahweh, and you have Yahweh Shai, okay, and you have the um, the the Holy Spirit, okay, which they're all on one accord. That's why we say Yahweh Bashem Rashai Bashem Rakakwadash, okay. Because those are what moves us to be able to have the understanding. Three different entities, but they're on the same accord. Okay? And that's in Matthews uh, 28 and um, 28 and about uh, 19, where it speaks about that. There's a second Ezra 9. Going back to this, the second Ezra 9 and 5. Yep. Second Ezra is nine and five. For like as all that is made in the world had the beginning and the end, and the end is manifest. Going into um, Daniel's uh, two and twenty, we're speaking about the prophets had the had the wisdom to be able to what change times and season. Because whenever you see the prophets, that's how you know a uh, kingdom is being put down. Okay, through what the prophets right? Because Yahweh Shem Rashi would always send his prophets to warn his people. Going back to Second Chronicles um, thirty six and fifteen, as I brought out earlier. Okay. Powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And then we're going to about to see a powerful work by Yahabba Shemar Shai saving his elect. And also World War III, these hypersonic missiles are destroying this place, a time of trouble like never before. Okay. Seven, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by the faith whereby you believe. Okay. So again, faith without works is not dead. So if you have faith, you're going to have works. Freely as you give, freely as you receive. If you love me, what did Yahweh Shai say to Peter? If you love me, John 21 and 17, if you love me, feed my sheep. Okay? And the elect is going to be able to be saved because they have faith in the Lord. Okay? Now, I've been bringing this out a lot, but I'm going to bring it out again. This is Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. It says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And as... Be for faithful and love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is to the saints and he can't had care for his elect. So he has care for his elect. That's who he's coming back for. Okay. Two thirds of our people are not going to, they're not going to, he's not coming back for them. It's the second Ezra is four. Actually, I think that's Sirach. And 28. Sirach five, four and 28. Strive for the truth and to death and Yahweh Shai shall fight for thee. And that's what we're doing. We're striving for the truth. Constantly and occupied in psalms and hums, you know, examining our truth, examining ourselves, seeing if we be in the faith, whatever that we go off on, repenting for our sins, right? All right, so go back to 2nd Ezra 9. And what is that, 7? 2nd Ezra 9, yep. 9 and 8 shall be preserved from the said perils. So those that have faith, they're going to be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in the land within my borders. For I have sanctified them from the beginning. Sanctified means what separated. Okay. Going into the Allah because Exodus 13 and two, that's the first church. Okay. And all things are, um, all things that are the first are subject to Yahweh Shem Shai, the animals and the beasts, and also what the, um, the first fruits. Okay. Which, which Lord willing we are, which is going to be the elect, right? It says, um, nine, then thou shalt be in pitiful case, which shall now have abused my ways, and they have cast them away, despite me, they shall dwell in their torment. So they abuse, um, Yahabba Shemarashai's ways by what? Engaging in man on man, woman on woman, transformers, you know, selling out their soul, um, just, just to be able to, um, they, they have their consolation here, sold their soul to the devil, um, you know, just to be able to be part of this world when the Lord told you not to do that. Okay, make no covenants with these devils, right? And it says, um, second Ezra is nine and nine in the middle. It says they have abused my ways. So they abuse uh, this word. They misuse the prophets and they have cast them away. Despitefully shall dwell in torments. Yeah, going into right here. Because their torments, because right now people are, are, you know, they're in the beginning stages of catching hell. But this thing is going to increase. Going into what Jacob's trouble. This is a uh, Sirach forty and nine. 
death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities and famine, tribulation and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked. For their sakes came the flood. Okay? And that's going to be Esau Edom coming into uh, certain people's houses and what robbing and stealing their goods. This is um, Jeremiah 30 and 4. Jeremiah 30 and 4. And these are the words that Yahweh spoke concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Okay, to so the two tribes, right? Northern and southern tribes. For thus said Yahweh, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Yep, because again, no food, no water, no shelter. Esau, Edom coming in like a flood. Six, ask ye now, see whether a man do travail with a child. Wherefore do he see every man on his hands and his loins, and a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. Yeah, because again, there's going to be mass death too. And there's going to be animals running around. Um, I always say this is going to be like Jomanji mixed with the purge. Mixed with um, uh, Bushwick, mixed with War of the Worlds, um, you know, mixed with Red Dawn, the old Red Dawn, and there's going to be utter chaos. Okay, a time of trouble like never before. You know, um, you know, people are going to be killing babies. You know, uh, ravaging women. Okay, uh, uh, you know, you're going to pe see people's heads decapitated. There's going to be mass death. Okay, this is the time of Jacob's trouble. This is the warning that the prophets are giving you, whether you will hear or you forbear. Okay, because this is this is not a private interpretation. These are the scriptures, and these things are happening. Jeremiah 30 and 7, I last for that day is great, so that none is like it, even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So the elect are going to be saved out of the time of trouble. Okay, that's it's headed into. Let's get a couple of scriptures on that. That's Sirach 39 and 14. Yep, Sirach 39. Well, this I'll get this one too. This is Sirach 39 and 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which on their fury lay on sore strokes. But in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hail, famine and death, and all these are created for vengeance. The fire going into what the missiles, the hail going into what the missiles, the famine going into the destruction on the people because they didn't want to hearken. Death because you don't have no food, you don't have no water. And you were trying to uh, get some food from the neighbor. And now he now he decapitated you. These are created for vengeance. Spirits created for vengeance. Esau, Edom is created for vengeance, right? It says, teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and sword, punishing the wicked for destruction. Going into these new created beasts. Uh, going into when Esau, Edom hit these uh, certain animals with, um, with that beetle juice, okay? It says, they shall rejoice in this commandment. Who's that? That's the elect. And there shall be ready upon the earth when need is. And when the time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So the elect are not going to transgress this word. Okay. Even though we're going to have to see a, a lot of death. Okay. We're not going to transgress this word. We're going to hold tight on this. Lord willing, we're of that number. It's the second Ezra 8 and 50. Second Ezra 8 and 50. For many great misery shall be done unto them in the latter time that shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. Okay, and that's what you're seeing. Many people are walking in great pride. People, are, uh, women are getting judged left and right. They're still selling their ass. Uh, you know, men are walking around with that tough guy spirit. Okay, and Yahabashim Rasha is going to put that tough guy spirit on, on one of these uh, weak people, so called weak people, and guess what? They're going to end up devouring them. Okay, and Yahabashim Rasha has, has preserved what, 7,000 men that won't bow down to the image of Baal. They're going to be able to be all right, but through what? Much tribulation? We shall enter into the kingdom. This is Acts 14 and 22. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must do much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Shemar al Shai. Do much tribulation. Okay? It's going to um, Matthew's, as the guy was speaking about also, um, about Matthew's, yeah, right here, uh, speaking about the winter and them not what, having any heat. Okay, not having any oil, and ultimately with the EMP hit, no food or no water. Matthew 24 and 20. But pray ye, your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So now this happened in the time of uh, when the temple was sacked. Okay, um, but again, this is uh, also for this time too. Because again, what are they doing? They're cutting off supplies where the winter people are going to freeze to death. Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, and there should no flesh be saved. For the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So again, when you go into that word elects right there in 22, 
it goes into electos, which goes into chosen, which goes into the chosen uh, line that are not going to bow down to the image of Baal. Okay, and what Esau Edom is doing is he's uh, putting out all his wicked inventions, all the instruments of the churl, and he's throwing them all out on the table at one time. That's why the Lord has to intervene. That's why the days are speeding up. So going back to Second Ezra 9. And I think it was like about eight. Second Ezra is nine and ten. For such as in your life have received benefits and have not known me. So a lot of people they had good health, you know, they might have had a good job, but they have not known Yahweh Bashim Rashai. Okay, and how are they going to know him? By death, by pain, as it, re as it says early uh, later in the scripture. It says, and they that have loathed my law. So again, you you are going to the Christian church. Or even you were uh, you were uh, Israel, you were in the Israelite camp, but then you were following after uh, talking about Most High Christ blessed, carrying around guns, uh, having women teach. You have loathed my law, whether you yet had liberty. So you had liberty to hear the truth, which is the head apostles at Great Millstone and the, and the and the men that follow the same like mind doctrine. Okay, it says, and they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, they understood not, but despised it. Yeah, they despised it. Because again, this goes into what letting go of everything in the in this world, even your family and your friends sometimes, okay, might be losing a job, a car, whatever that it may be, okay. And people don't want to do that; they want to have comfort. And in this script, in these, um, in this truth, uh, Apostle Rakal always says this: you know, in this truth, you can't be comfortable, okay. You know, we're comfortable in the word, but we gotta trust in our true power. Okay, because again, everything could change at a, at a twinkling of an eye, you know, less than 60 seconds like the movie, right? And it says, Second Ezra 9 and 12, the same must know it after death by pain. Okay, that's how they're going to know Yahabba Shema Shai, death by pain. Because it's not going to just be, oh, he just died. No, it's going to be a famine. It's going to be, um, let's get it, Amos. I think it says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Yep, okay. Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto them that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him and went into the house and leaned on his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of Yahweh be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Going into those hypersonic missiles, Going into the famine, the plagues, the bloodshed, the strife, the calamities, okay? Going into the, to the rape, robber, murdering of, of, of people, okay? Going into the, the, the people put, you know, burning burning stuff up, the looting, the grabbing, the stealing. It's <laughs> woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Like it said, a lion, a lion had met a bear and a serpent bit him. So a lion, okay, I skipped that lion. Oh, now there's a bear. Oh, shit. Now you rest for like one second. Now a serpent bit you. Okay. And that, that's why it says, woe unto you the desire of the day of the Lord. So if you're not coming with that full doctrine, that full belief, you're going to get caught up in these things. And it's, and it's important to what? Repent for your sins and seek your Habashim HaShai while he may be found. Okay? And pray that he has mercy on you. Second Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore be not curious how the ungodly shall be punished. And when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved. Who's the world is and for the whom the world was created. So the world was created for the elect. Okay. Ultimately for all of Israel, but for the elect to be able to judge. Okay. Yahweh uh, Shai, the King of King, Lord of hosts, you know, then the, what the tabernacle of David as what the days of old. Okay. And also I want to get a couple more scriptures and I'll end it. This is second Ezra. We'll go to 15. Yep. It says, Second Ezra 15 and 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that, that speak against thee. So again, there's also another scripture in Romans 3 and 3, which speaks about, um, woe if, woe if you, you don't believe. Okay. What does it mean if you don't believe? Is that going to stop any prophecy? No, it's not. And that goes into the word incredulity right there, the unbelief. Okay. So let not the incredulity, those that don't believe, uh, trouble thee and speak against thee. For the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, said Yahabah Shemashai, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, the famine, the death, and destruction. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and the hopeful works are fulfilled. Okay? 
Therefore said Yahweh Shem I will hold my tongue no more as touching the wickedness which they have profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they have wickedly exercised themselves. Behold, the innocent of the righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Okay, the souls of the just are the elect that are what in celestial bodies, and the ones that what um cry to him daily, the ones that are up in the heavens that got killed, okay, or or you know went to the spirit world. They're crying for Yahweh Shema Shai to seek vengeance on these devils, and he, he's it's, it's about to pop off. Second Ezra fifteen nine. It says, and therefore said Yahweh Shema Shai, I will surely avenge them, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. So yeah, all these devils have killed our people, rape, rob, and murdered our people. Right? It says, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will suffer them uh, now to dwell in the land of Egypt, and this is spiritually Egypt. Okay, going back to uh, Egypt, we were in bondage there. Okay, and we're in bondage now under Esau Edom. He wants us to. He wants to implement his device under our temple. Socket in our well, yeah, under our temple, but in our in our temple, which is our body, okay, to have us be um, perpetual slaves. This is eleven. But I will bring them with the mighty hand and stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before. I will destroy all the land thereof. And didn't he do that before? Okay, and it, it speaks about it. Uh, it was a Dan, uh, socket John twelve and twenty eight. Is uh, Yahweh Shai asked the heavenly Father Yahweh showing you that those are two different people, or two different entities, right? Uh, Yahweh Shai asked, Yahweh, will you, will you um, glorify your name again? And, and um, Yahweh said, yes, I will glorify my name again. And that's how he's going to do it, through his son, through Yahweh, through his son, right? It's going to be glorified, right? Yahweh Bashim Shai. It says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm. That's Yahweh Shai, that mighty arm. It says, and smite Egypt with plagues as before. I will destroy all the lands thereof. And that's what they did. That's what Yahweh Bashim Shai did back then. Okay, far as the um, uh, all the people of uh, the all the Egyptians were plagued, but the Israelites were able to what escape the, the said plagues. Okay, just like right now, but this time, um, all of Israel is not going to get saved. Two thirds got to get sacrificed on the El Mazabah. Okay, while the um, while the uh, the one third is going to be able to escape, which is the elect. Okay. But again, it's not going to be easy, just like it wasn't easy back then, because you had apparitions, you had uh, de death all around. Okay, so it's this, it's it's uh, similar to this time, but this time only what the one third is going to be saved, the elect. It says, um, thirteen. It says, they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds shall fail through the blasting and hail, uh, with fearful consolation. So again, going into the destruction, right? So you have what the the seeds they're not going to be able to. Uh, grow anymore there's not going to be anyone to till any land because it's going to be that hail which is going to be what those intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to be firing off and with fearful uh constellation it says woe to the world that dwell therein so woe goes into destruction okay that don't want to hearken to this word for the sword and the destruction draweth nigh and one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands yeah because well you don't have gas you don't have oil you don't have food you don't have water and i keep saying the same thing over again but this is what's going to happen then you're going to be, uh, they're going to be people out there fighting with makeshift weapons and, and guns and, and all, all sorts of things that you ain't never seen before to what, to, to try to be able to survive. It says 16, for there, sh for there shall be sedition among men, invading one another, and they shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Sedition goes into revolt against the government. Okay, why? Because they're coming out with draconian measures. They're cutting off food supply. They're selling the oil reserves. Okay, and people are going to be going into people's houses, what spoiling their goods. Okay, and they're going to be going. We saw that over there in um. Uh, it was a couple places in the middle, basically in the Middle East, where there were, people were going into the houses and, and basically going into these different government places. Okay, I think it was uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka was one of them, and there was another one where they went into the house and basically they they were like partying in the pool and shit. Okay, so th these things are going to happen over here in Babylon the Great, right? It says, in the course of the action shall stand in their power, and men shall desire to go in a city and shall not be able, because these cities are going to be death zones, okay? And plus, they're going to have martial law set up in these different places, similar to, um, what's that movie, To Kill a Mockingbird, right? Where they had the trains that were going place to place and basically picking up the people, and they're basically fighting over food, things like that. But desire to go in the city, yeah, these cities are going to be death zones.
Okay, just like it was in the, uh, I think it was the Purge Forever, when they were in, um, they were going to Mexico, they were trying to go to the border, and basically it was everywhere they went, there was people killing each other. It's going to be like that, but even worse. Second Ezra 15 and 18, it says, For because of the pride of the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Yeah, people are going to be afraid, because again, when you don't have food, you start to think differently. Your mind starts to bug out. Okay, when you see maybe one of your family members die, your wife, your your children, it's going to be ugly. The time of Jacob's trouble. 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with their sword and the spoil of their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Through much tribulation, we shall enter into the kingdom. So with that, call Hala Yahweh by Shimei Shai, by Shimei Kakwadash, Shalom to the elect, Kwam Yashalom.